Okay, in this video, since we now have our IP address set on our laptop and we were able to verify that we do have a connection into the micro H20 and that, that, that our laptop can see the micro H20, we can now start using the programming software, which is called the Connected Components Workbench or CCW software from Rockwell Automation. There was a separate video that talked about how to download it and then install it. So um, also making sure that you have done those steps before, of course, you get to this point. So uh, again, if we if we got our IP address set and we have a good, you know, we, we, we were able to see the device through in our Slinx Classic, we can now proceed with opening up CCW and doing some real basic configuration and, and downloading to the controller. So, um, so to, to do that, we will, uh, there's a couple ways to go about it. If you just installed it, it might've been under the recently added. Um, I have mine set as a, as a little bit of a uh, bookmark here, connected components workbench. But if you don't have those two things, of course, you scroll down a bit and you're gonna find a folder called Rockwell Automation. And under Rockwell Automation, there will be connected components workbench. And it has this kind of strange looking icon, almost like a, like a, a two electrons going around something. But uh, we're going to click on that. And this will open up the software. It's going to take a minute or two. I'm just going to do this live and let it, let it uh, actually run its course. So it will take a few moments. So this will kind of also help validate to you that if you think it's taking too long, um, just relax and uh, let it do its thing. So I'm going to bring it over to this window. Um, so this is kind of what happens when you first come to the software. We'll kind of get to the start page. Um, what you'll see here is we have a project. We have the ability to say a new open existing or discover pro project. We have recents. So any recent projects that I've created will show up here in this list. And then we also have a section over here called getting started. And this is a uh, very useful information. Um, the first, the link here will bring it to the software homepage that was back on Rockwell's website. The training videos and sample codes. So if you click on training videos, there will be several videos that have been created to help step you through getting started. So if you're stuck and you want to spend some time, you can run through some of these videos. Um, sample codes is, they do have some sample code library, basically some starter projects that you can take. Um, you can, you're more than welcome to, to take a look in there and see what they have. We're probably not going to use those most likely uh, in this class, but uh, just know that, you know, Rockwell does spot you on some, some cases for, for some um, sample projects. Uh, but for us, for the very first time, we need to create a new project. So we're going to say new, and it's going to come up with default. Mine says project seven. Yours will probably say project one. It also gives a default location, which you can also change. This was basically uh, the default, my, my documents folder and the CCW folder that got created when it got installed. Um, I'd probably recommend keeping it there, but if you wanted to put it into a, a, another folder that you, you know and can find quickly, then that's fine too. And project seven by default, um, we can of course call this anything we want. Uh, we can call it uh, ELET. 287 um, you know, demo and give it a unique name, of course, and we're going to hit create. Now, at this point, we need to tell CCW what it is we're going to be uh, developing for. This software does more than just the micro H20 controllers. It does uh, controllers, it does our drives or our very frequency drives. It does motor starters, our smart motor starters. It does Allen Braley's uh, some safety products and it does Allen Braley graphic terminals as well. This is a controller. So of course you can expand all these and you can see the various um, products underneath each one. If you're just kind of interested in seeing what else it can do. But for us, we're going to go under controllers. And when we chose controllers, we even had a few other options. We have uh, we have one, two, three, four, we have five different controller types. We have the micro 810, the micro 820, 830, 850, and 870. We have the micro 820, so we want to choose micro 820. We expand that. 
Uh, then we still have a few more choices here, and that is the model of the micro 20 that we're using. So there are three models available, and for what we have and you'll be using, we have this last one, the 20QWB. So we're going to highlight that. When we highlight it, you can see we get a we kind of get the uh, information about that unit pops up right here, and it gives us a description. It says it's a micro 20 It's a Two, it's got 12 24 volt DCN puts. It's got four configurable analog inputs with thermistor seven relay out. So this will just give you a little bit more validation to make sure that you've actually, um, you know, this is kind of the one you have if you didn't quite know your part number. Uh, the version, we're going to leave this at 12. This is just the firmware version that we could use. So we're going to stick with version 12 firmware. Another important thing is to choose select right here. So we choose select that now put it um, into the selection uh, list and we say add the project. So what's happening now is it's just going to kind of build the project frame around this microwave 20. It's putting in all the microwave 20 pieces so that we can you know, further program and develop the microwave 20. So once we uh, now that we have that, uh, we have the uh, the project organizer on the left, and this gives you our project name or the type. Um, well, the project name is actually up here, and then we have a, it's a micro H20, and then we have programs, global variables, user defined function blocks, user defined functions, and then data types. So we'll kind of mess with this stuff as we go throughout the class. Uh, we have a picture of what our device looks like, and it should look like what you have sitting in front of you. Uh, on your desk or table. Um, again, we have a name. Uh, we, we could put a description in here just for our own documentation. Uh, we have a little more information about the vendor, the catalog number, its life cycle. It's, act, it's an active product, it means it's not, this hasn't been obsoleted, and its version. Um, and then we have whatever kind of general configuration properties underneath this kind of uh, tree structure here. So that's our general. We have memory. Again, so many things we may not be able to change. It might just be more information, but this just tells you about the amount of memory you have in a controller, maybe what's been used. Um, startup, serial port. And uh, what we really need to worry about, at least at this point, is the Ethernet port. Because by default, when we create this project, there is no Ethernet settings in here. As a matter of fact, it's kind of like we talked about in the and it's setting your IP address on your laptop, it's defaulted to obtain IP address dynamically uh, or automatically using the DHCP or the dynamic host uh, configuration protocol. Well, we don't want that. Like we talked about in that previous video, we want to set what we call a static IP address, something that's fixed. It's also very important at this point that you type in the IP address that is actually in the controller. Because if you typed in a different number here and here, it's going to overwrite and change that setting in the controller. So ideally, we don't want to do that. Um, so the IP address that is currently set to your controller is 10.10.1.11. Now again, the subnet mask populates automatically with 255.000. And that is uh, perfectly fine to keep it like that. Or if you wanted to, you could go ahead and do the 255, 255, and octets two and three. But again, making sure to leave the last octet as a zero. Don't change that. And then the gateway can stay default. And that's it. There is no accept or OK. Um, so the reason why that's important is, again, is when I get connected and when I download, it's going to take that that Ethernet setting and it's going to set that into the controller. And if you had a different number there, or if you put Obtain automatically, it's going to put that setting in the controller. And uh, it might, if you if you change something and you didn't, didn't realize what you changed it to, you might have a very hard time getting back connected to this controller again. So this is a very important step. Um, at this point, just for what I'm trying to show here, I just want to show the, the main step of how we're going to get connected. So up here, uh, there is a button that says connect. Now, this is again the very first time. So we're going to have to set what we call a connection path 
to the controller. It's not set right now, but if I hit the connect button, it's going to open up basically that same kind of RS links tool that we showed earlier. It's a, it's a version that's kind of built in. And this should look kind of familiar to this, right? We had links gateway, ethernet IP-1. And we've got the same thing here. We've got backplane, ethernet, AB, ETH-1, ETH IP-1, and some other stuff. We're gonna go with the ETH IP-1. And when I just kind of expand that, automatically we found it populated with the the pan, the, uh, the micro H20 that is actually on the network. And it shows the IP address 10.10.1.11 and the, what it is, the, the catalog number and the micro H20. So just some further validation that we know that this is the right thing. Of course, there's nothing else connected. So, but if you're out in the field, you can have three, four, five, up to 10, even more devices all listed here. So you just wanna make sure you're connecting to the right device. I'm going to sit here, I'm going to highlight it, and I'm just going to hit OK. Now when I did that, my connection path changed. It now shows, um, this is just the name of my computer in the uh, ABTH uh, ETH IP-1 and then the IP address itself. Now this will come up to the current project does not match the contents in the connected controller. They're just basically telling you that the project you've created is different than what's inside of the controller. Do you want to download or do you want to upload? Very important to note, if you want to download, that means I'm going to take what's on my laptop computer and download it to the micro H20. So I'm going to overwrite what's ever in the micro H20 PLC. If I were to choose upload, it's the exact opposite. It'll take whatever is in the micro H20 PLC and upload it to my laptop and overwrite what is in my laptop. So be very careful there and make sure you choose the right thing. Um, for the most part, we're going to only do downloads in this class. Uh, there could be a time where you want to upload out the controller because you don't know what's in there and you want to see what the program was that you had in there. But probably majority of what we're going to do in this class will always be a download. So just make sure to choose that properly. Otherwise you could overwrite some of your, your hard work and you'll have to do it again. Um, so I chose download. It will take a moment to, um, uh, so we get this uh, kind of, we get this kind of uh, output window down here and it just talks about you know, any errors or warnings that'll kind of show them down here. So it's very important to keep an eye on that. If there's any errors, it'll tell you what they are. Uh, and then just says a warning, hey, the project and the controller will be overwritten. And you have two choices here, download or download with project values. We'll just choose download. This is just, again, kind of a, are you sure you want to do this kind of step? And then we are done. So that is essentially um, what we will do. Uh, the very first kind of, you know, when you first get this thing, you'll just, you know, kind of take the software and kind of validate that you can make this connection to the controller, um, get connected with a, you know, create a project, uh, get your connection path set, get connected and download. If you can do that, then um, it's going to be pretty much downhill from there. All right, we'll uh, pick up in another video that actually will show programming, uh, but that'll be, we'll, we'll cover that in a separate video.